Jack Thompson joins us in the breakfast studio. Jack, welcome. Thank you very much, Fran. Jack, Banjo Patterson, Henry Lawson. Yeah. Two of the greats. They are a two of the greats. They're uh, sort of the, the pillars of the Australian ballad, the Australian, uh, in, in Lawson's case, I think the Australian short story was has never been better than the stories that Lawson wrote. And they're two, uh, they're two pillars of an Australian way of life. Uh, and uh, their icons, it's interesting that they were both, they've both been on the $10 bill. I've, I still haven't been able to find out why Lawson, who was on the first of the $10 bills, was replaced by Patterson. The two of them are probably in the hereafter. The rivalry continues. The rivalry continues. So your um, your CD of Banjo Patterson was a big hit. It was indeed. Henry Lawson, how will that? Why? How will that be different for people? Uh, well, it's it's different because the two writers are very different in their approach, uh, and because the first uh, CD that we're releasing uh, of Lawson's is the Campfire Yarns. Uh, released just in time for Father's Day. Great Father's Day present. <laughs> Gee, that was lucky. <laughs> now, um, we used to, some of our more famous actors and, uh, and well, entertainers really, reading poetry and recording poetry. Mm. Sadly, it's often their own. Um, yeah. You're not recording yeah. your own, though I no, wonder if I'm you've not. ever been tempted. <laughs> um, but you are, as, you say, as, as we've said, you're going to be recording some Henry Lawson. Can you give us a, a taste now? Can you read us something? Absolutely. What about a little of the loaded dog? Uh, in in this in the story at this stage, uh, Dave Regan's had one of his bright ideas, and he's going to dynamite the fish out of the creek instead of trying to fish for them. And unfortunately, his dog Tommy thinks that the new stick is part of the old game of fetch. The retriever, finding the front door shut against him, had bounded round and in by the back way and now stood smiling in the doorway leading from the passage, the cartridge still in his mouth and the fuse spluttering. They burst out of that bar. Tommy bounded first after one and then after another. For being a young dog, he tried to make friends with everybody. The bushmen ran round corners and some shut themselves in the stable. There was a new weatherboard and corrugated iron kitchen and wash house on piles in the backyard, with some women washing clothes inside. Dave and the publican bundled in there and shut the door. The publican, cursing Dave and calling him a crimson fool in hurried tones and wanting to know what the hell he came here for. The retriever went in under the kitchen amongst the piles, but luckily for those inside, there was a vicious yellow mongrel cattle dog sulking and nursing his nastiness under there. A sneaking, fighting, thieving canine whom neighbours had tried for years to shoot or poison. Tommy saw his danger. He'd had experience from this dog and started out across the yard still sticking to the cartridge. Halfway across the yard, the yellow dog caught him and nipped him. Tommy dropped the cartridge, gave one terrified yell and took to the bush. The yellow dog followed him to the fence and then ran back to see what he'd dropped. Nearly a dozen other dogs came from round all the corners and under the buildings, spidery, thievish, yellow, cold-blooded kangaroo dogs, mongrel sheep and cattle dogs, vicious black dogs that slip after you in the dark, nip your heels and vanish without explaining, and yapping, yelping small fry. They kept at a respectable distance round the nasty yellow dog, for it was a danger to go near him when he thought he'd found something which might be good for a dog to eat. He sniffed at the cartridge twice and was just taking a third cautious sniff when it was a very good blasting powder, a brand new brand that Dave had recently got up from Sydney and the cartridge had been excellently well made. Fantastic. Are they made to be read, though, stories like that? So Banjo Patterson's one thing, but Henry Lawson, did he, did he oh, like them to read? Oh, absolutely. Oh, he did, very much. Uh, the, the, it was, uh, we're talking pre-radio, uh, uh, and uh, the Bulletin uh, published these stories and these wonderful ballads to be read, to be read around the fire at night, to be read in the living room. People would say, listen to this. They have a fabulous rhythm to them. And, uh, and he writes in a way that reveals like a tagline at the last minute. So, Banjo Patterson, Henry Lawson, who's next? Maybe C.J. Dennis. Oh, yes. How would that be? That would be fantastic. Wonderful. <laughs> as long as you promise book. me you'll include something from the book for kids. Oh, yes. 
Oh, there's plenty in this book for kids. <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty in this book for kids. And do you love this? Is it nearly as much fun as acting? Oh, I love it. It's wonderful, Frank. All right, Jack, thanks very much for joining us and thanks very much for reading for us. Thank you, Frank. It's always a pleasure. Jack Thompson and the Campfire Yarns of Henry Lawson is out through Fine Poets next month. If you want to find out more, go to finepoets.com.